There were a lot of people that were involved in the process of creating the flipped content for this new course. Previously, there would be uh, one or two or maybe up to three lecturers doing the primary lecturing for these large engineering courses. Um, and then there would be another handful of uh, teaching staff running some tutorials once a week to answer questions that the students might have. When we went through the design process, there were about five of us who were involved in a working group to try to hammer out the details of how we wanted to um, organize the, the flipped content. This also involves some liaising since this was a mathematics course, but it was for engineering students, so we had to discuss this with uh, various staff in the different engineering departments that we would be servicing. Then we had to make all of the videos that would go along with the course. In this case, it's a year-long course, and there were eight of us that made videos for the content that would replace the lectures. Um, there is also an online testing system that goes along with these videos to uh, ensure that the students are interacting and actually watching the videos. Um, so there's another person involved in that. And then now, once we've implemented the course, we have these smaller class sizes, and that means we actually have more people doing teaching, um, but what they don't have is they don't have a standard lecture. Instead, they have a much more active kind of teaching experience where the students have some problems to solve and they really get to discuss those problems with the students on an individual basis. We think switching to the flip mode of teaching actually was a slight increase in resources on our teaching staff. Uh, now, it was quite difficult to measure the difference or to give a, a clear comparison between what we used to do and what we did now. I mean, it was clear how much teaching was being done in the new version of the course. We would split students into groups of 40 and each group had a tutor which they saw twice a week. So it was easy to get an idea of that kind of teaching time. Difficulty was in the past we had a slightly different setup with some full, fully qualified lecturers and some PhD students working in groups of varying sizes um, and although we had a sort of an idea of the ratio of total number of staff to students, how much of that was sort of lecturing staff and how much was uh, PhD student wasn't clear. But our best estimates is that we've slightly increased resources, but not by a whole load. And then the interesting thing was as we introduced more and more students to this way of teaching, we're now up to a thousand students being taught in this way, we did start to see economies of scale in terms of people being involved in the running of modules. Um, a bit less time spent on the sort of administrative side of organising a course, that's where you get the efficiencies. And in fact we also introduced a course administrator, a member of the administrative staff, to answer routine emails from students, um, taking that burden away from the lecturing staff. Thank you.